Midst the crystal clear waters that embrace the Great Barrier Reef, Dr. Eliza Montgomery, a fervent marine biologist, was on the cusp of an encounter that would redefine her life's trajectory. The year was 2015, and Australia's northeastern shores, teeming with vibrant marine life, served as her research canvas and source of inspiration. Driven by an unwavering resolve, Eliza was on a quest to shed light on the previously unseen aspects of Grey Reef Sharks' mating rituals, a key piece in the puzzle of their preservation. The journey commenced under a sun that draped the sea in a cloak of golden radiance. Alongside her, her seasoned research companion James Calloway and their team embarked from the lively hub of Cairns, setting their sights on a renowned shark-gathering spot. This locale had been the backdrop for countless hours Eliza had dedicated to immersing herself in the aquatic domain she cherished deeply. As their vessel, the Sea Guardian rocked gently upon the waves, adorned with the emblem of the Oceanic Research Institute, it stood as a beacon of their pledge to decode and safeguard the enigmas of the deep. The air buzzed with anticipation, mingled with the customary nervous excitement that precedes a dive. Yet for Eliza, this was her sanctuary. Plunging into the abyss, Eliza was enveloped by the serene allure of the reef. Fish, shimmering with iridescent hues, wove through her surroundings while the coral sprawled beneath her like a sprawling city of the sea. Engulfed in her element, she meticulously catalogued her observations, her hands moving with a precision born of experience. James, immersed in his studies nearby, was oblivious to the looming shadow that approached. A massive gray reef shark, its sleek frame slicing through the water quickly, caught Eliza's eye. It was a mesmerizing sight that momentarily captivated her with its grace. However, the shark's demeanor swiftly shifted, veering from the norm. It didn't merely pass by but began circling closer, its gaze fixed on Eliza. In an instant, the shark launched its attack, its formidable jaws ensnaring Eliza's left leg. The onset of shock and agony was instantaneous as a shroud of blood clouded the water around her. Fueled by adrenaline, she struggled to repel the shark, wielding her dive knife in a desperate bid for freedom. The encounter was brief, yet fierce, ending as abruptly as it had begun with the shark vanishing into the depths. James, drawn by the disturbance, was by Eliza's side in moments. Time was of the essence. He fashioned a tourniquet and aided her ascent, signaling for immediate evacuation. Their return to Cairns was a haze of torment and apprehension, with Eliza's thoughts lingering on the shark, pondering the motives behind its aggression. The hospital became Eliza's realm in the ensuing months. The damage to her leg necessitated amputation below the knee, heralding a daunting physical recuperation marked by relentless rehabilitation and the challenge of mastering a prosthetic limb. Yet, the psychological battle proved most arduous as she grappled with doubts about her future, profession, and connection to the sea. Nonetheless, Eliza's resilience was unyielding. Bolstered by the encouragement of her loved ones and the global marine biology fraternity, she rediscovered her resolve. Her harrowing ordeal had endowed her with a profound understanding of shark behavior and the perils marine biologists face. Embracing her narrative as a catalyst for change, Eliza ventured back into the waters. Her initial dive post incident was not merely a personal victory, but a symbol of defiance against adversity. Undertaken in solidarity with the myriad marine species dependent on oceanic well-being, in the following days, Eliza emerged as a staunch advocate for the conservation of sharks and the broader marine ecosystem, tirelessly working to replace fear and misconceptions with knowledge and compassion. Her narrative, The Dive of Destiny, kindled a worldwide movement committed to oceanic preservation, galvanizing others to pursue a sustainable legacy. Eliza Montgomery's odyssey, from misfortune to empowerment, is a powerful testament to the indomitable human spirit. She fulfilled her mission through her endeavors and sparked a global initiative for environmental stewardship, illustrating how individual bravery can fuel collective action for a better tomorrow. As the sun set on the horizon, casting a golden glow over the Great Barrier Reef, Dr. Eliza Montgomery stood tall, her prosthetic limb a testament to her resilience and unwavering dedication. What began as a fateful encounter with a gray reef shark has become a beacon of hope and inspiration for marina conservation world weedy. With each dive, each lectury, and each advocacy fort, Elisa continued to champion the causes she held dear. 
reminding us all that from adversity blooms opportunity and tragedy emerges triumph. Through her courage and determination, she reshaped her destiny. She ignited a global movement toward a future where the oceans thrive, ensuring a legacy of preservation and stewardship for future generations. On a cold evening in September 2004, the college swimming team gathered at the shores of Lake Baikal in Russia. This is the deepest lake on Earth and also one of the most mysterious. It was a night of initiation, a rite of passage for the new swim team members. The tradition of swimming across a dark, isolated lake area was to be continued. The lake's glassy surface reflected the dim light from the moon and the surrounding quietness added to the eerie ambiance. The team of experienced swimmers and recruits prepared themselves on the lakeshore. The team donned their goggles and swim caps with their skin tingling in anticipation and from the cold. Senior members told tales from past swims. Each added a layer to the event's lore but omitted the latest danger lurking below the calm surface. Unknown to them, a group of bull sharks had been introduced into the lake, a species not native to this freshwater lake. The exotic pet dealers who illegally introduced these sharks into the lake had underestimated their adaptability and resilience. Sharks not only survived but thrived in the freshwater environment. The water was shockingly cold on their warm skin as the team started their swim. The team began swimming in a close group. Their safety headlamps cut through the darkness of the water and created an otherworldly glow. The calmness was misleading because predators had already become aware of the disturbance beneath the lake. The team members encouraged each other to swim with steady strokes and completed the first half without incident. As they approached the deeper part, their mood changed. A little behind the group, a recruit felt a sharp, sudden tug on her leg. She tried to scream in a panic, but the water muffled her cries. She struggled in the water, but the group behind did not notice her struggles. The team had spread so far out that confusion set in by the time the swimmer disappeared. The vast, dark water suddenly seemed threatening and full of unknown dangers. A swimmer who felt a brush on his foot instinctively kicked out, his heart racing as he realized something was wrong. The group was shocked to learn they weren't alone in the water. What had begun as a structured swimming session turned into a desperate struggle to survive. The team's cohesion began to break down as each swimmer responded differently. Some tried to swim faster while others froze. They could not see past the headlamp beams in the darkness. Each splash and wave signaled a new danger. The seriousness of the situation became apparent as more team members began to disappear being pulled underwater without a trace. The initiation became a life-threatening struggle for survival, as the depths of Lake Baikal claimed them individually. The remaining swimmers tried desperately to regroup in the chaos that followed. Their minds were racing as they attempted to understand the danger they faced. Some swimmers located each other in darkness, with their headlamps bobbing like fragile beacons. They all decided to run straight for the nearest land, knowing they could only survive by escaping from the water. The lake's cold water soaked into their bones and slowed their movement. The swimmers swam in a mixture of urgency and fear, aware that an attack could come at any time. The lake had changed from a tranquil and beautiful place to a terrifying landscape. Each ripple of the water was a warning that danger lurked below. The dark waters behind them remained silent, with the only sounds coming from their frantic strokes and heavy breathing echoing through the night. They tried not to think about their teammates who were gone. Instead, they focused on the faint outline of the shoreline lined with trees. The swimmers' muscles were burning from the exertion, and their minds were filled with fear. But they kept going because of the will to live. After what seemed an eternity, one of the swimmers finally felt the bottom of the lake rise under them. After reaching the shallow water near the shore, they collapsed from exhaustion. Even as they lay there, gasping to breathe, their relief from the ordeal that they had just endured was tempered by horror and the knowledge that not everyone had survived. After the terrifying swim, survivors gathered around, shaking from shock and cold. The survivors were safe at the moment, but their trauma and the loss of friends were overwhelming. The magnitude of what had happened began to dawn as the sun rose, casting a pale light on the lake. At first light, the authorities were alerted, and a search and rescue operation was initiated. The search for the missing team members was conducted in the lake, 
but the task became difficult and dangerous due to the presence of sharks. The tragedy spread quickly, and the community surrounding Lake Baikal was shocked. In the weeks following, steps were taken to remove and capture the sharks. The incident ignited a conversation about wildlife conservation and the illegal pet industry, highlighting the dangers of introducing non-native species into unfamiliar ecosystems. The swimmers survived with physical scars, a deep respect for nature, and a painful reminder of how easily adventure can turn into disaster. They still carried the memory of that night on Lake Baikal, a reminder of how thin the line is between youthful adventure and mortal danger. The lake, now serene, still held in its depths the secrets of the night, a testament to the unpredictable nature of the world and unintended consequences caused by human interference. Jaya, a 22-year-old Indian University student, was known for her exceptional intelligence and insatiable curiosity about the world. She had a close-knit group of friends who shared her passion for exploration, and they often discussed their dreams of traveling and experiencing new places together. Images of Australia's breathtaking sea and tales and experiences shared by other travelers caught Jaya's attention one day while browsing the internet. The allure of this distant land was irresistible to her, and without hesitation she decided to embark on a spontaneous journey to Australia the very next day. Excitement bubbled within her as she shared her plans with her friends. They were equally enthusiastic and decided to join her on this adventure. Together they dreamed of a one-week tour filled with fun and the acquisition of new knowledge. Their discussions about the trip grew more frequent and animated as the university vacation approached. With the vacation finally in sight, they made concrete plans for their Australian adventure. Tickets were booked, accommodations were arranged, and the group began packing their bags eagerly. On February 12th, the day of their departure, they were ready to embark on this thrilling journey. Australia's natural beauty left them in awe, and they relished every moment there. When fatigue set in, they would return to their hotel room to rest and rejuvenate for the next day's adventures. One morning after a hearty breakfast, Jaya decided to capture some memorable moments. Armed with her camera, she began taking pictures of her friends against the picturesque backdrop of the sea. While she was engrossed in her photography, her friends decided to take a break, find a comfortable spot, and immerse themselves in leisurely reading. As Jaya continued documenting their journey through a video, she suddenly noticed something unsettling. The water seemed to be inching closer to her. Initially, she didn't think much of it, assuming it was a regular occurrence. She called out to her friends to join her, but they were engrossed in their activities and didn't pay much attention. However, as Jaya kept recording, she realized that the water was not receding, but advancing rapidly toward her. Panic washed over her, and she desperately called her friends for help. Ignoring their initial reluctance, they rushed to her side. Amid this chaos, a terrifying event unfolded. A massive tiger shark emerged from the depths of the sea and collided with Jaya's board. Remarkably, she managed to maintain her balance, but the encounter left her afraid. The group of friends had heard stories of the dangers of tiger sharks, and their worst fears were coming true. Seeing the shark approach once again, Jaya took quick action. She attempted to paddle her board away from the predator, hoping to outmaneuver it. However, the relentless tiger shark struck her board again, hitting it from the side. Jaya's friends were now frantic, shouting for her to return to safety. In a desperate bid to escape, Jaya did her best to paddle away as fast as possible, but the relentless tiger shark persisted. The situation grew increasingly dire, and her friends panicked as they witnessed the terrifying encounter. In sheer terror, the tiger shark made a final lunge and struck the side of Jaya's board with great force. A piece of equipment that had fallen into the water temporarily distracted the shark and this impact caused the board to crack. Jaya seized an opportunity, frantically paddling away from the predator. With a mixture of relief and fear, she managed to put some distance between herself and the shark. Realizing her danger, her friends called for help and alerted the authorities. A cry for assistance echoed across the water, and the Coast Guard swiftly arrived to intervene. With their quick response, they managed to deter the tiger shark and ensure Jaya's safety. The shark, frustrated and foiled in its pursuit, disappeared into the depths of the sea. 
Trembling and traumatized, Jaya was rescued from the water and brought to the shore. Her friends rushed to her side, relieved she was safe but deeply shaken by the harrowing experience. They immediately contacted local hospital staff, who arrived promptly to tend to Jaya's injuries. The extent of her wounds was severe with significant blood loss. Jaya was rushed to the hospital, where doctors worked tirelessly to stabilize her condition. She underwent life-saving procedures and surgeries to address her injuries and blood loss. The situation was critical, and it took a considerable amount of time for Jaya to stabilize. Fortunately, Jaya's resilience and the medical team's efforts paid off, and she gradually began to recover. However, her road to full recovery was long and challenging. She remained in an Indian hospital for three grueling months, receiving continuous medical care and support. During this time, her friends had returned to India, unable to continue their journey without her. The incident shocked the entire university community, and many of her fellow students frequently visited the hospital to check on Jaya's condition and offer their support. As weeks turned into months, Jaya's condition improved, and she was eventually discharged from the hospital. Her friends were there to welcome her with open arms, relieved and overjoyed to see her on the path to recovery. The traumatic encounter with the tiger shark had left its mark on Jaya physically and emotionally. She underwent rehabilitation and counseling to help her cope with the incident's aftermath. Her friends were her unwavering support system throughout this challenging period, standing by her side as she regained her strength and confidence. While the trip to Australia had taken an unexpected and terrifying turn, it had also strengthened the bonds of friendship among Jaya and her friends. They had faced a life-threatening situation together and emerged from it with a newfound appreciation for each other and life itself. Jaya's story served as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the importance of safety when exploring unfamiliar environments. Her journey to recovery was a testament to her resilience and the power of friendship and community support. In the far reaches of Maine's coastline, Shrouded in mist and the relentless crash of waves, the Rockhaven Lighthouse stood as a solitary sentinel against the ravages of time and sea. This tale begins in 1998, when Amelia Winters, a woman of steel resolve and indomitable spirit, took the helm as the lighthouse's keeper, stepping into a role that was as much a calling as it was a duty. The island on which the lighthouse stood was an enigma, its jagged cliffs and whispering winds holding secrets of days long past. Amelia, undeterred by the ghost stories and legends that haunted the island lore, devoted herself to her task with unwavering dedication. Yet the island and its surrounding waters seemed to awaken with a series of unnerving events. Sharks, seldom seen in these cold northern waters, began to appear with alarming frequency, their attacks growing more bold and terrifying with each passing day. The island's inhabitants, a tight-knit community of anglers and their families, grew increasingly anxious their fear palpable in the salted air. But Amelia's courage did not falter. She perceived these events not as omens of doom, but as puzzles to be solved. And so, under the cover of a storm that raged with the fury of the ages, she descended into the bowels of the lighthouse where records dating back centuries were kept. In this place, where time seemed to stand still, she discovered the island's dark history. It had once been the center of a prosperous fishing village, its people living in harmony with the sea. But as hard times fell, the villagers turned to dark rituals, seeking to appease the gods of the deep with a covenant forged in shadow. This pact Amelia Learned had cursed the waters around the island, a curse that now threatened to consume them all. Refusing to stand idly by while this ancient darkness ravaged her new home, Amelia set out to uncover the truth behind the curse. Her quest led her deep into the island's heart through forests that seemed to watch her every move, and along cliffs that whispered of despair. With each step, the curse's grip seemed to tighten, manifesting in eerie and ominous signs. Yet, in these darkest moments, Amelia found an unlikely ally in Benjamin Hayes, a historian with ties to the island's mysterious past. Amelia and Benjamin embarked on a journey fraught with danger and discovery. They uncovered hidden paths, deciphered ancient scripts, and braved the stormy sea all searching for an artifact believed to hold the power to break the curse. Along the way, they encountered remnants of the past, 
the ruins of the old village, artifacts left behind by those who had tried and failed to overcome the curse, and most chillingly, the Guardians of the Deep, creatures twisted by the dark pact that had been made. As they neared the island's heart, where the artifact was said to be hidden, the very forces of nature seemed to conspire against them. The storm reached its apex, and from the depths emerged a beast of legend, a shark of unimaginable size and ferocity. It was the embodiment of the curse, a protector of the dark pact that had doomed the island. Many would have faltered in the face of such terror, but Amelia Winters stood resolute. She confronted the beast with a courage born of conviction and a heart unyielded by fear. And in that moment, with a strike fueled by hope and a determination to protect her home, she shattered the artifact, breaking the curse and banishing the darkness back to the depths from where it came. The storm abated, the sea calmed, and peace returned to the island for the first time in generations. The sharks vanished as swiftly as they had appeared, and the island's inhabitants emerged from their homes, stunned by the sudden change. Amelia's bravery had not only saved them from the immediate threat, but had also lifted the veil of fear that had shrouded the island for centuries. In the days that followed, Amelia's legend grew. She was no longer just the lighthouse keeper. She had become a guardian of the island, a beacon of hope in the darkest of times. Standing atop the cliffs, looking over the sea that had tested her in ways she could never have imagined, Amelia knew she had found her purpose. But even as life returned to normal, Amelia understood that the island would forever hold its secrets, its history a tapestry woven with threads of joy and sorrow, darkness and light. And though she had faced the abyss and emerged victorious, the sea's mysteries remained endless and unfathomable. Yet, in one woman's heart, the island's spirit found its voice. A story of resilience, courage, and the unbreakable bond between humanity and the vast, mysterious ocean surrounding us. Amelia Winters, the lighthouse keeper of Rockhaven, had etched her name into the annals of legend, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit when faced with the unknown. Miami, Florida was hit by an unprecedented natural disaster in August 2000. Hurricane Eloise was a storm of unprecedented force that barreled relentlessly toward Miami. Residents stocked up on supplies and boarded their windows to prepare for impact. But nothing prepared them for the unique danger that came with the storm. As Eloise landed, powerful winds and torrential rainfall battered the coastal city. The streets quickly flooded and turned into rivers while neighborhoods were transformed into lakes. Storm surges pushed beyond the usual boundaries of the beach, bringing debris and seawater and several bull sharks displaced from their habitats. Bull sharks are usually found in shallow coastal waters near Miami. However, these bull sharks were swimming through streets that had been flooded and past submerged cars. Floodwaters turned the urban environment murky and expansive for these powerful predators. Sharks quickly adapted to their new surroundings, with their instincts taking over to hunt in the flooded urban waters. Residents of Miami were already struggling with the devastation caused by the hurricane. Now they faced an even more terrifying reality. They had to remain vigilant as they tried to escape to higher ground or sought refuge in the upper floors of the building. Each splash or shadow on the water's surface could be a threat. Hurricane Eloise continued to rage, and the floodwaters were high. The city was awash with bull sharks now living in the streets. This added an unreal and terrifying dimension to the disaster. Once known for its bustling life, the town became filled with quiet chaos. Nature had taken over the urban landscape. Things became dire in neighborhoods such as Little Havana and Coconut Grove, where floodwaters were the deepest. The situation was hazardous for elderly residents and families with small children who could not navigate the water safely. The people used anything they could find, including inflatable mattresses and floating debris, to move through the waters while keeping a close eye on the bottom. The city fell into an eerie silence as the night wore on, punctuated by the howling winds and the splashes of water caused by the movement made by the sharks. Most of the city was in darkness due to the lack of power. Only the flashes of lightning illuminated the streets. The emergency services were stretched beyond their capacity. Rescue teams on boats navigated submerged streets to try and reach people trapped in their homes or stranded on rooftops. Sharks were present in the water, making their task even more dangerous. 
The floodwaters hid the usual obstacles of urban life and the additional dangers of displaced predators. Residents of Miami faced a night filled with uncertainty as the first day of the storm ended. The intensity of Hurricane Eloise began to diminish as dawn broke on Miami. The floodwaters continued to linger, and the bull sharks kept on their unplanned journey through the streets of Miami. It was only when the sun came out that the extent of the destruction and the strange reality of marine predators patrolling the streets of what were once busy city thoroughfares became apparent. Tired from a night's vigilance, residents began better coordinating their actions. As the storm weakened, community leaders and volunteers set up makeshift command centers at elevated points within the city. They started directing people to safer areas using megaphones and any battery-powered devices they could find. They guided them along less flooded routes that sharks had scouted. Scientists from the local Marine Biological Institute studied this unique interaction between urban environments, aquatic life, and the environment. The scientists advised the rescue crews on predicting shark movements, influenced by currents created by slowly receding floodwaters. Understanding these patterns helped rescue teams avoid areas where sharks are most likely located. The temporary hunting grounds of the sharks began to shrink as the water receded. This funneled them into the deeper waters along Miami's main arteries. The consolidation of sharks in more predictable areas made it easier to evacuate and conduct rescue operations. Drones were used to monitor shark movements from above and provide real-time updates for the teams on the field. As they worked together, the community was put to the test. High water vehicles were brought in to provide essentials and transport people to temporary housing. Local radio and social media informed people about evacuation routes and shark sightings. After several days, the floodwaters began to recede sufficiently to allow for a large-scale evacuation. National Guard units arrived with more resources and a better understanding of the situation. The city faced a monumental task once the water receded enough to reveal the streets. The town was left with scars from the temporary presence of sharks. Buildings had been damaged, cars scattered, and marks were visible on the urban landscape. The relief of knowing that the immediate threat was over was palpable. The city then took steps to prepare itself for future anomalies. The town designed barriers that could be deployed quickly to stop marine life from entering areas populated during floods. The community was better prepared and informed by implementing educational programs on the dangers posed by wildlife in natural disasters. This experience brought to light the delicate balance between urban living and nature. The ordeal also highlighted the unpredictable nature of climate change and how it can bring marine life into direct contact with cities. Miami residents survived the hurricane and adapted to a unique challenge, navigating through a shark-infested flood. The experience was unforgettable, reminding everyone of nature's unpredictability and power. In the summer of 1994, while on vacation in China, Arav, an energetic 18-year-old college student, found himself craving adventure. Arav's heart belonged to the rivers and seas that caressed the shores of China even though his home was there. He could no longer resist the urge to see the water, especially one summer. Arav decided to tell his father about his ambition, since even though he had visited the beach many times, he had never seen his son's enthusiasm for the concept. Even though he was accustomed to the beach, he consented to go on this adventure with Arav in a touching show of fatherly affection. They had decided to take advantage of a Sunday holiday together. Arav woke up early on that fateful Sunday morning, excited for the adventure ahead. Following a substantial breakfast, he grabbed a tiny camera and other supplies for their day excursion. Arav was excited to tell his father about this desire because he had always supported the family and didn't hesitate to give his kids special moments. The sun shone brightly as they arrived at the beach, illuminating the crowd of people enjoying themselves. When Arav saw a board for hire, he persuaded his father to sail with him. His father had never been to the beach before, but gave in to his son's contagious enthusiasm and accepted without hesitation. Unquestionably, there is a unique quality to experiencing the world through the eyes of a loved one, mainly when that loved one is as ardent as Arav. They started their underwater journey after renting the board and having Arav's father pay for the expenses. Arav was a whirlwind of activity, 
shouting to his father and striking up conversations with the seaside inhabitants. With the sound of the waves as their constant companion and the sea wind blowing through their hair, their voyage had already been unforgettable. But that day, fate had more in store for them. They were met with an amazing and unanticipated encounter as they glided through the serene waters. The giant tiger shark they had ever seen surfaced from the depths. Even though Arav was initially excited to see such a magnificent animal, he couldn't help but get a chill of terror. It was a rendezvous with one of the most formidable predators in the ocean. Therefore, this was no ordinary encounter. They felt goosebumps as the enormous tiger shark glided gracefully and powerfully toward their boat. It made a circle around the board, almost like it was these two intrepid travelers. The enormous shark made another pass, slamming into the board, as Arav's heart raced and his terror intensified. Arav lost his balance due to the crash, which sent shockwaves through the small craft. His arms were slightly bruised as the shark's muscular body brushed against them during the following mayhem. The board wobbled alarmingly, tipping over and causing panic. Swiftly moving, the board's operator expertly steered it across the safety area and away from the shark that was drawing near. Despite the terrible situation, Arav's father attempted to reassure his son in a moment of bravery and love. He tried to contain Arav's dread despite the confusion and adrenaline rush. But things were serious, and Arav needed emergency medical attention for his injuries. Arav's father immediately made plans for their son to be taken urgently to the hospital. After receiving immediate and meticulous care for his arm, Arav regained full use after six months of recovery and therapy. Arav and his father's relationship grew stronger due to their shared experience on that awful day. They understood that the greatest remarkable experiences in life frequently resulted from chance meetings and difficulties. Though not in the way he had anticipated, Arav's desire to see the water had materialized. With the same enthusiasm that had driven his ambition to explore the sea, Arav continued to pursue his studies and profession in the following years. He will never forget the day he faced the biggest tiger shark head-on, and the lessons he learned from it have stuck with him ever since, reminding him of the wonder and unpredictable nature of the natural world. As Jack Thompson ventured deeper into the remote waters of Alaska, his kayak slicing through the tranquil surface of the Pacific Ocean, he couldn't shake the exhilaration that coursed through his veins. It was the summer of 2008, and Jack had embarked on a solo expedition, seeking solace and adventure amidst the rugged beauty of the Alaskan wilderness. Setting out from the picturesque town of Sitka, Jack had bid farewell to civilization, eager to immerse himself in the untamed grandeur of nature. With each stroke of his paddle, he felt a sense of freedom wash over him, leaving behind the stresses and worries of everyday life. The sun hung low on the horizon, casting a warm glow over the towering mountains and dense forests that lined the rugged coastline. The air was crisp and refreshing, carrying the faint scent of salt and pine. For Jack, this was paradise, a world untouched by man's hand, where the wild reigned supreme. As he paddled more profoundly into the wilderness, Jack found himself lost in the beauty of his surroundings. Snow-capped peaks loomed overhead, their jagged edges starkly contrasted against the azure sky. Seals basked lazily on rocky outcrops while bald eagles soared high above, their piercing cries echoing across the water. But amidst the serenity of his surroundings, Jack couldn't shake the feeling of unease that gnawed at the edges of his mind. Deep down, he knew the wilderness could be unforgiving, its beauty masking hidden dangers that lurked beneath the surface. It was midday when an unexpected disturbance shattered Jack's tranquil reverie. Out of the corner of his eye, he caught sight of a dark shape gliding beneath the surface of the water. At first, he dismissed it as a trick of the light, but as he continued paddling, the shape drew closer until he could make out the unmistakable silhouette of a shark. Panic surged through Jack's veins as he realized the gravity of the situation. He was miles from the nearest civilization, alone and vulnerable in the ocean's vastness. With each passing moment, the shark drew closer its dorsal fin slicing through the water with ominous intent. Desperate to defend himself, Jack frantically searched for any means of protection. Grabbing his paddle, he brandished it like a makeshift weapon, ready to fend off the approaching predator. But the shark was relentless, circling Jack's kayak with unnerving persistence. 
As the tension mounted, Jack racked his brain for a solution. Suddenly, an idea struck him. Remembering a trick he had learned as a wilderness survivalist, Jack reached into his backpack and retrieved a canister of pepper spray. With trembling hands, he sprayed a cloud of the aromatic substance into the air, hoping to deter the shark with its potent scent. To his relief, the tactic worked. The shark recoiled at the noxious odor, its sleek form vanishing beneath the waves in a flurry of bubbles. Seizing the opportunity, Jack paddled with all his might, putting as much distance as possible between himself and the predator. Hours passed, and Jack's arms ached from exertion, but he refused to give up. With steely determination, he pressed onward, navigating through treacherous currents and swirling eddies. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, he caught sight of the familiar shoreline of Sitka looming in the distance. With a surge of adrenaline, Jack paddled towards safety, his heart pounding in his chest. As he reached the safety of the shore, he collapsed onto the sand, overcome with exhaustion and relief. After collapsing onto the sand, Jack lay there for what felt like an eternity, his body racked with exhaustion and relief. It wasn't long before a group of fellow kayakers, drawn by the commotion, rushed to his aid. With gentle hands and words of encouragement, they helped Jack to his feet and guided him to a nearby campsite where they tended to his needs. They offered him food and water, wrapping him in warm blankets to ward off the chill of the evening air. As Jack recounted his harrowing encounter with the shark, the group listened intently, their faces a mixture of awe and sympathy. Despite the trauma he had endured, Jack couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for the kindness and compassion shown to him by his fellow adventurers. At that moment, he realized that he was not alone, that even in the most remote corners of the wilderness, people were always willing to lend a helping hand. As he drifted off to sleep, surrounded by the warmth and camaraderie of his newfound friends, Jack knew that he would forever be grateful for their timely intervention. In the days that followed, Jack's story spread like wildfire through the small town of Sitka, earning him the admiration of his fellow adventurers and the respect of the local community. Though he had faced death head-on and emerged victorious, Jack knew that he would forever carry the memory of his kayak encounter with him a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Jack lay on the shore as the sun lay below the horizon, and the stars began to twinkle in the night sky, gazing up at the vast expanse of the universe above him. At that moment, he felt a profound gratitude for the beauty of the natural world and the precious gift of life itself. And as he drifted off to sleep, lulled by the gentle lapping of the waves against the shore, Jack knew that he would always cherish the memory of his Alaskan adventure. This kayak encounter tested his courage and strength, and ultimately reaffirmed his love for the wild and untamed beauty of the world around him. The community of Gansbai in South Africa, a coastal town known for its rugged coastline and abundant marine life, was preparing for the 2004 tourist season. The 2004 tourist season was crucial to the city which had been struggling with economic difficulties. Inviting tourists interested in shark cage diving and watching whales would boost the community's local economy. A renowned local shark hunter, famous for his bold exploits, ventured beyond his usual territory in search of a catch that would secure his place in maritime hunting lore. His target was a pregnant great white shark known to frequent the waters near Gansbai. Although his hunt was successful, it triggered a series of unfortunate events. The shark he killed was paired with another great white, recognized by distinctive black markings on its dorsal fin and locally known as blackfin. Blackfin was so distraught by its loss that it altered its behavior. It had previously avoided the shallow waters around the beach. Now it is a regular visitor and moves almost deliberately aggressively. A local fisherman first noticed that his nets had been destroyed. This was far more than the usual damage caused by marine life. Blackfin became more and more dangerous as the weeks went by. The town was filled with a chilling air as swimmers reported close encounters. As the season approached, the beaches were eerily quiet. As the news of these encounters spread, tourists canceled their bookings out of fear for their safety. Businesses faced closure and the future of the town was in jeopardy. Initially skeptical, the local authorities needed to recognize the issue once marine biologists confirmed Blackfin's unusual behavior. 
The shark had not been passing through, but was now identifying where it had experienced conflict. The town council called an emergency meeting to discuss possible actions. They contacted experts in shark tracking and marine behavior to develop a plan to deter blackfin safely. Residents of the town were on high alert. A palpable sense of tension is marked every day. A collective breath was held until nightfall. The harbor, once crowded with tourists and boats, was mostly empty. The water around the harbor was unaffected except for Blackfin's ominous circle. A group of conservationists in the area saw the opportunity to save the tourist season and change the town's fortunes by changing their approach to wildlife-based tourism. They suggested a shift in focus from shark hunting to conservation. They argued that protecting Blackfin would attract a new visitor more interested in conservation and educational activities than thrill-seekers. The town's first step in deciding on this new strategy was obvious. It needed to guarantee immediate safety while also developing a plan for the future that would benefit both the town and the marine residents. The challenge was daunting, but the stakes were too high to ignore. The solution needed to not only deal with the immediate threat of Blackfin, but also pave a path for a sustainable and respectful relationship between the community and the natural world. The decisions they were about to make would determine the survival of Gansby, both economically and in terms of community. The town of Gansby acted quickly because of the urgency of the situation. They had to deal with sharks in their waters to move towards a more sustainable approach. This was done without harming the sharks or disrupting the marine environment. Marine biologists and shark experts were brought in to help with this crisis. They began by installing acoustic devices near the most popular areas. These devices are designed to emit sounds that sharks find unpleasant but are harmless. This encourages Blackfin to leave the beach areas. The town also launched a campaign aimed both at locals and visitors. The campaign emphasized the importance of conservation of the marine environment and the role that sharks play in the ecosystem. The campaign explained new safety measures for people and sharks. The campaign began by changing the narrative of fear into one of respect and coexistence for wildlife. Blackfin sightings in near shore waters decreased as these efforts gained traction. The shark appeared to be returning to its natural habitat, deeper waters. The community cautiously welcomed this shift, but knew the real test would be the peak of tourist season. Gansby had everything ready for the arrival of the season. Drones were used to monitor the beaches for safety, and the acoustic repellents continued to work. Now, tour operators offer educational tours that focus on shark conservation. These include visits to research facilities and lectures from marine biologists. The tourists returned, much to everyone's relief. They were attracted by the promise of learning and seeing marine life responsibly. The town has been transformed. Businesses preparing for closure are flourishing and many have shifted to support the eco-tourism model. Local economies began to recover due to the influx of visitors who wanted to support a community that valued sustainability over sensationalism. The conservationists and scientists kept an eye on blackfin as the season progressed. The biologists and conservationists tracked blackfin's behavior and migration patterns, collecting data to contribute to shark conservation efforts. The research helped Gansby manage its marine life and position the town as an ethical leader in wildlife tourism. In the following months, the story about Gansby's blackfin was told to a larger audience. Documentaries and articles showed how the town transformed a crisis into a catalyst for change by highlighting the importance of protecting and respecting the natural world. Gansby became a model of how to balance human activity and wildlife conservation. The town organized a marine conservation festival in the final days of tourist season. The festival celebrated the success and efforts of the community to live in harmony. Blackfin was once a sign of loss and revenge, but now it symbolizes resilience and adaptability. The festival ended with the residents of Gansby looking out at the waters that had threatened their existence but now offered a sustainable future. The balance they achieved was fragile and would require constant effort and vigilance. For now, however, they saved their town, enriched their relationship with the ocean, and ensured that both could flourish. Blackfin's legacy would not be a tale about revenge, but rather a story about redemption and hope for a better future. In the vibrant and teeming waters of the Great Barrier Reef, Australia, 
Dr. Emily Harris, a dedicated marine biologist in her early 30s, embarked on a dive that would immerse her in the heart of one of the world's most magnificent underwater ecosystems. With her keen interest in coral conservation and marine life, Emily sought to study the intricate relationships that sustained this natural wonder. Armed with her waterproof notebook and camera, Emily descended into the clear azure waters early one morning. The sun's rays filtered through the water, illuminating the reef's myriad colors and casting a serene glow on the underwater world. As she swam past schools of brightly colored fish and over vibrant coral formations, Emily was in her element, meticulously documenting her observations and capturing the reef's beauty. The Great Barrier Reef, a kaleidoscope of life, offered an ever-changing biodiversity landscape. Emily navigated through the coral gardens, her movements graceful and respectful of the fragile environment around her. Her focus was on the health of the coral, noting areas of bleaching and regrowth, vital signs of the reef's struggle and resilience. As she ventured further, Emily entered a less explored part of the reef where the waters grew deeper and the marine life more elusive. It was here that she hoped to gather data on the less observed species, contributing to her ongoing research on the ecosystem's dynamics. The tranquility of the dive was suddenly interrupted when a shadow loomed in the periphery of Emily's vision. Turning slowly, she came face to face with a tiger shark, its distinctive stripes unmistakable against the blue backdrop. Tiger sharks, known for their curiosity towards divers, were not uncommon in these waters, but their presence was always a reminder of the wild and unpredictable nature of the sea. Emily's heart skipped a beat as the shark circled her, its movements deliberate and inquisitive. She knew staying calm was crucial. Sudden movements could be interpreted as a sign of distress or provocation, potentially triggering the shark's predatory instincts. Emily maintained her composure by recalling her training and encounters with marine life. She knew eye contact with sharks could sometimes deter them, showing she was aware and not prey. She kept her eyes on the shark, moving slowly to keep it in her field of vision without making sudden or threatening gestures. The shark, seemingly satisfied with its assessment, continued to circle, maintaining a safe distance but keeping a watchful eye on Emily. She took slow, measured breaths through her regulator, mindful of every movement, every bubble that escaped towards the surface. As the minutes passed, the tension in the water was palpable. Emily needed to ascend to the surface, but too quickly or abruptly could provoke the shark. She had to balance her safety with the need to respect the creature's space, all while capturing this rare encounter on her camera, evidence of the delicate balance between humans and nature in this underwater paradise. The standoff between Emily and the tiger shark, a formidable and majestic creature unfolded with a silent intensity beneath the waves of the Great Barrier Reef. Aware of the depth and the decompression stops required for a safe ascent, Emily began to plan her return to the surface with utmost care. Her experience as a marine biologist had taught her the importance of gradual movements in the aquatic realm, especially in the presence of predators. The shark, its sleek body gliding effortlessly through the water, seemed to mirror Emily's cautious movements. While keeping her gaze fixed on the shark, Emily slowly positioned her camera to document the encounter. The images she captured would add to her research and be a powerful reminder of her work's raw beauty and inherent risks. As the minutes ticked by, Emily initiated her ascent, ascending slowly to avoid alarming the shark. Her eyes remained locked on the creature even as she carefully monitored her dive computer adhering to the necessary safety protocols. The tiger shark, perhaps sensing her intention to leave, continued to circle at a distance, its curiosity not yet satisfied. The water around them seemed to pulse with the life of the reef, the vibrant colors and movements of other marine inhabitants creating a mesmerizing backdrop to their encounter. Emily's heart, though still racing, was filled with a profound sense of awe and humility. She was a visitor in the depths of one of the planet's most extraordinary ecosystems, witnessing the complex interplay of life that thrived beneath the waves. As Emily reached her first decompression stop, she hovered allowing her body to adjust. The shark, its interest seemingly waning, gave her one final lingering look before turning away and disappearing into the blue expanse. Emily watched it go, a mix of relief and disappointment coursing through her. On the surface, Emily's colleagues awaited her return, their anxious faces breaking into smiles of relief as she emerged from the water. 
As she recounted her encounter, her respect for the tiger shark and the lessons it reaffirmed about coexistence and respect in the natural world became evident. Her story punctuated by the stunning photographs she had taken underscored the importance of her work and the need to protect these magnificent creatures and their habitats. In the following days, Emily's encounter with the tiger shark became a focal point of her research presentations. She spoke of the need for conservation, the beauty of the underwater world, and the delicate balance between humans and marine life. Her experience, a close call that ended in mutual respect, served as a poignant reminder of the wonders and dangers of the deep. The Great Barrier Reef, with its endless mysteries and breathtaking beauty, had once again proven to be a place of learning and discovery. For Emily, the encounter reaffirmed her commitment to marine conservation, a vivid illustration of the challenges and rewards of exploring the uncharted territories of the ocean. Her close call with the tiger shark, far from deterring her, only deepened her resolve to protect these waters and their inhabitants, ensuring that future generations would have the opportunity to witness the marvels of the deep, just as she had. In the summer of 1992, a young Canadian boy named Jaden was immersed in the excitement and anticipation of an unforgettable adventure. Jaden was a diligent student at a Canadian university, with his academic pursuits often consuming his time and attention. However, as the semester ended, he and his fellow students were presented with an opportunity that promised a break from the rigors of university life and the chance to explore the beauty of Indonesia's sea. The promise of this upcoming trip had been a beacon of hope for the weary students who had toiled through their final exams and papers. The prospect of freedom and adventure filled the air, and Jaden couldn't help but feel the excitement coursing through his veins. With the semester's end drawing near, the university had made all the necessary arrangements for the trip. The date for departure had been prominently displayed on the notice board, and the students were given ample time to pack their bags and prepare for the journey of a lifetime. The university had reserved tickets, guaranteeing Jaden and his fellow adventurers a smooth and hassle-free trip. The day of departure arrived, and Jaden eagerly gathered his belongings, a mixture of anticipation and nervous energy coursing through him. He rendezvoused with a close friend at the airport, both punctual and excited about the journey ahead. The university staff would accompany them on this trip, ensuring their safety and guiding them through the wonders of Indonesia. Upon arriving in Indonesia, the university arranged accommodations for the students at a nearby hotel. The weary travelers gratefully settled into their rooms, preparing for the adventures that awaited them tomorrow. Jaden's excitement was at its peak as he drifted off to sleep visions of sandy beaches and crystal-clear waters dancing in his dreams. Jaden and two friends ventured out the following day, eager to explore the coastline. Their youthful enthusiasm led them to walk along the beach without seeking permission or guidance from the university staff. Jaden had always possessed an insatiable wanderlust, and he couldn't resist the allure of the sea. As Jaden strolled along the shoreline, he couldn't help but marvel at the beauty surrounding him. The turquoise waves lapped gently at the shore, and the sun bathed everything in a warm golden glow. He found a spot on the beach and settled down, content to soak in the moment's serenity. Unbeknownst to Jaden, danger lurked beneath the tranquil surface of the water. In the depths, a formidable and fearsome predator, a tiger shark, had already spotted Jaden's figure on the surface. The shark moved silently its powerful body slicing through the water as it closed on its unsuspecting prey. The moment arrived swiftly and without warning. With a sudden burst of speed, the tiger shark lunged at the surface, its dorsal fin cutting through the water like a blade. It struck the floating board Jaden had been standing on, jolting it violently. Jaden lost in his thoughts and the beauty of his surroundings was caught off guard. He hadn't been paying attention to the ominous presence lurking below. As the board wobbled and tilted, Jaden lost his balance and tumbled into the water directly into the path of the hungry tiger shark. In an instant, the tranquil scene was transformed into a nightmarish tableau. The water erupted in a chaotic frenzy of thrashing, churning waves as the shark seized its prey. Jaden's world was plunged into darkness and terror as he felt the jaws of the tiger shark clamp down on him. The horrifying reality of the situation unfolded in the blink of an eye. Jaden's life was extinguished instantly, 
his body becoming one with the sea. The water turned crimson as his blood mingled with the ocean, creating a gruesome tableau of nature's brutality. Back on the beach, Jaden's friends were paralyzed with shock and fear as they witnessed the unthinkable unfold. Jenna's camera fell to the sand, forgotten as she screamed in horror. They watched helplessly as the tiger shark retreated into the depths, carrying Jaden with it, leaving behind only a trail of crimson in its wake. The boardman, responsible for ensuring the safety of the students, had witnessed the horrifying incident from a distance. He reacted with lightning speed, swimming towards the now empty and bloodied board. Panic and fear coursed through him as he desperately looked for any sign of his friend. But Jaden had vanished in the tiger shark's ruthless jaws. Shaken and traumatized, joyful Jaden's friends called out for help, summoning the university staff to the scene. The news of the tragic incident spread like wildfire among the students who had embarked on this ill-fated adventure. The once joyful trip had turned into a nightmare of unimaginable proportions. In coordination with local authorities, the university staff launched a search and rescue mission in a desperate attempt to recover Jaden's body. Despite their exhaustive efforts, the sea remained unforgiving, refusing to yield its grim secret. The relentless currents and the vast expanse of the ocean thwarted their every attempt to find any trace of their fallen comrade. Days turned into nights, and the search continued, but hope dwindled with each passing moment. The reality of Jaden's loss weighed heavily on the hearts of his friends and the university staff. The once celebratory trip had become a sad and tragic chapter in their lives. Word of the devastating incident reached Jaden's family back in Canada, and they were left in disbelief and despair. The news that their beloved son and best friend had met such a tragic and untimely end was a crushing blow that shattered them. The memory of Jaden's vibrant spirit and his unquenchable thirst for adventure lived on in the hearts of those who had known him. His tragic passing served as a stark reminder of the unpredictable and unforgiving nature of the world a reminder to cherish each moment and each person in our lives. In the end, Jaden's story serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the unpredictable nature of our world. It reminds us to savor every moment, embrace every opportunity, and hold our loved ones close, for we never know when the tides of fate may sweep them away, leaving only memories in their wake. In the vast expanse of the Southern Ocean, off the coast of Australia, lies the rugged beauty of Port Lincoln, known for its stunning landscapes and adventurous spirit. It was here in the year 2011 that the newlywed couple, Sarah and John, found themselves embarking on their honeymoon. Port Lincoln, a small coastal town nestled amidst rolling hills and azure waters, was a haven for thrill-seekers. It was renowned for its cage-diving expeditions, offering brave souls the chance to come face to face with the ocean's apex predators, sharks. Sarah and John, both adrenaline junkies at heart, eagerly signed up for the cage diving experience. Little did they know, their honeymoon adventure would soon become harrowing. As the morning sun cast its golden rays over the horizon, Sarah and John boarded the dive boat, their hearts racing excitedly. They were joined by a handful of other thrill seekers, all eager to glimpse the majestic great white sharks that roamed the waters below. The boat sailed out into the open sea, leaving the safety of the harbor behind. Soon they arrived at their destination, a remote stretch of ocean where the sharks were known to frequent. The crew wasted no time lowering the sturdy metal cage into the water and securing it to the side of the boat. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, Sarah and John donned their wetsuits and eagerly descended into the cage. The water was chilly against their skin, but the excitement of what lay ahead kept them warm. As they submerged beneath the surface, they were greeted by an otherworldly sight. The crystal clear waters teemed with life, vibrant corals, darting fish, and the occasional shadowy silhouette of a passing shark. But it was the moment when the first great white appeared that their hearts truly began to race. The massive creature glided effortlessly through the water, its sleek body glistening in the sunlight. Sarah couldn't help but gasp in awe at the sight. They watched in fascination for hours as the shark circled the cage, their powerful presence sending shivers down their spines. It was an experience unlike any other, and the beauty and majesty of these apex predators enraptured Sarah and John. However, as the day wore on and the sun began to sink lower in the sky, the mood aboard the boat shifted. Dark clouds gathered on the horizon, 
casting an ominous shadow over the water. The wind picked up, whipping the waves into a frenzy. Concern etched on their faces, the crew began to prepare for the journey back to shore. But disaster struck as they hoisted the cage back onto the boat. With a loud crack, the cage lurched suddenly to one side, sending Sarah tumbling against the metal bars. Panic surged through her veins as she realized the cage had been damaged, leaving a gaping hole on its side. Heart pounding in his chest, John frantically reached out to grab her hand, his eyes wide with fear. But before he could pull her to safety, a shadowy figure loomed out of the depths, a massive great white shark drawn by the thrashing of panicked prey. Time seemed to stand still as Sarah and John stared into the cold, unblinking eyes of the predator. Fear clawed at their hearts as they realized the danger they were in. Trapped in a damaged cage with a hungry shark lurking just outside, their honeymoon had turned into a nightmare. Desperation fueled John's actions as he searched for a way to free Sarah from the cage. He reached for a nearby wrench with trembling hands, his mind racing with possibilities. But as he tried to pry open the damaged bars, he realized with a sinking feeling that it was futile. Meanwhile, the crew aboard the boat sprang into action, deploying emergency protocols in a desperate bid to save the trapped couple. But their efforts seemed hopeless with the storm raging around them and the shark circling ever closer. As the minutes ticked by, Sarah and John clung to each other, their love a beacon of hope in the darkness. With every passing moment, the jaws of the great white shark drew closer, its razor-sharp teeth glinting in the fading light. But just when all hope seemed lost, a miracle occurred. With a sudden surge of strength born of sheer determination, John managed to pry open the damaged bars of the cage. Pulling Sarah to safety just as the shark lunged forward, jaws snapping shut inches from her feet. Gasping for breath, they surfaced to the tumultuous cheers of the crew aboard the boat. Relief washed over them in a wave as they were hoisted back onto the deck safety, their bodies trembling with exhaustion and adrenaline. For a fleeting moment, they had genuinely believed that their lives were about to end in the jaws of the great white shark, but as they were hoisted back onto the safety of the dive boat, the crew sprang into action, rushing to their aid with urgency etched on their faces. Sarah's hands shook as she clasped John's tightly their eyes locking in a silent exchange of gratitude for their miraculous escape. The crew swiftly administered first aid, tending to the cuts and bruises that marred their bodies from the frantic struggle to escape the damaged cage. Sarah winced as the antiseptic was applied to a gash on her arm, the pain a stark reminder of the peril they had narrowly escaped. But despite the physical wounds, the emotional toll weighed heaviest on their hearts. As they huddled together on the deck, wrapped in blankets and nursing hot cups of tea, they recounted the harrowing moments when they had faced death head-on, their voices trembling with emotion. Sarah's hands shook as she recounted the heart-stopping moment when the shark had lunged for her, its gaping jaws mere inches from her feet. She could still feel the rush of icy fear coursing through her veins as she scrambled desperately to escape the cage. John's voice quivered as he described the gut-wrenching terror of watching helplessly as Sarah had been trapped inside the damaged cage, the sight of the shark circling hungrily just beyond the bars forever etched into his memory. But even as they relived the terror of the ordeal, they found solace in each other's arms, drawing strength from the bond that had carried them through the darkest times. The crew stood silently around them, their faces somber with the gravity of the situation. As the boat sailed back to shore, guided by the steady hand of the captain, Sarah and John remained wrapped in each other's embrace, their hearts still racing with the memory of the horrors they had faced. But with every passing moment, the fear began to fade, replaced by a profound gratitude for the precious gift of life. In the days that followed, as they recovered from their ordeal, Sarah and John found themselves drawn even closer together, their bond forged in the crucible of danger. They cherished every moment they shared, savoring the simple joys of life with a newfound appreciation. And though the memory of the honeymoon horror would linger with them forever, they knew it was a testament to the strength of their love, a love that could conquer even the greatest of fears. Huddled together, weathering the aftermath, they recognized the enormity of what they had endured, a trial by fire for their bond, a testament to their unwavering commitment. As they made their way back to the safety of the shore, their hands interlocked, a silent promise passed between them, to treasure each passing moment in shared gratitude. 
they had braved the storm of a harrowing ordeal on what was meant to be a celebration of their union. Yet, they emerged not just unscathed, but fortified, their love proving to be an unbreakable force against the tides of adversity. Off the rugged coast of Baja California, Mexico, where the Pacific Ocean meets the Sea of Cortez, Jorge Alvarez set out in his modest fishing boat, El Guerrero. Jorge was a seasoned fisherman at 65, his life intertwined with the sea's ebb and flow. His weathered hands and sun-kissed skin bore witness to decades spent navigating these waters, where he had learned to read the ocean's moods like the pages of an open book. On this particular morning, the sea was calm, its surface mirroring the vast expanse of the sky above. Jorge had a feeling in his bones that it would be a good day for fishing. He had set his course towards a spot known among local fishermen for its abundance of game fish, a place where the ocean teemed with life just beneath the waves. As El Guerrero hummed along, Jorge prepared his gear with practiced ease, casting his line into the deep blue waters. Fishing was more than a livelihood for him. It was a connection to generations past, a tradition, and a way of life that he held dear. The sun climbed higher, casting a golden glow over the water. Jorge waited patiently, his experienced eyes scanning the horizon, his mind at peace with the world around him. It wasn't long before he felt a tug on his line, a sign that he had hooked something substantial. The reel screamed as the fish fought, its strength evident in the forceful pulls that threatened to drag the rod from Jorge's grasp. With a steady hand and a calm demeanor, Jorge worked to reel in his catch, his heart racing with the thrill of the challenge. He lived for this moment, the battle of wits and strength between man and nature. As the struggle continued, a dark shape caught Jorge's eye, cutting through the water with incredible speed. A mako shark, one of the ocean's fastest and most formidable predators, had been attracted by the commotion. The shark's sleek form and sharp teeth made it a fearsome sight, its presence adding an unexpected twist to Jorge's fishing expedition. The mako shark, drawn by the prospect of an easy meal, zeroed in on Jorge's catch, its movements quick and decisive. Jorge watched in awe and apprehension as the predator circled, its intent clear. The situation had escalated quickly, the serene morning giving way to a tense standoff between the fisherman, his catch, and the encroaching shark. Jorge knew he had to act fast. The shark posed a significant threat, not just to his catch, but to him and El Guerrero. Mako sharks were known for their aggressive behavior, and a confrontation could quickly end in disaster. With the shark closing in, Jorge weighed his options. Releasing the fish could save him from a dangerous encounter, but it went against every instinct he had as a fisherman. The sea was his life. Every catch was a testament to his skill and perseverance. As the mako shark made its move, Jorge's resolve was put to the test. The chaos on the boat, with the thrashing fish and the looming predator, created a situation fraught with peril. Jorge stood at the precipice, the outcome of this trial by sea hanging in the balance. The suspense of what would happen next held the air in a tight grip, a moment of uncertainty in the vast and unpredictable waters off Baja California. As the Mako shark approached aggressively, Jorge's years of experience on the sea kicked into instinctual overdrive. The fish on his line, a formidable opponent in its own right, suddenly seemed like a minor challenge compared to the razor-sharp teeth and raw power of the approaching predator. Jorge understood the stakes. It was not just about the catch anymore, but his safety and that of El Guerrero. Jorge decided in a moment of clarity amidst the brewing storm of fins and waves. He loosened the tension on his fishing line swiftly, giving the caught fish some slack, hoping it might give the shark a less static target. His plan was risky, potentially costing him his prized catch. Still, it was a calculated move to redirect the shark's attention and possibly save both the catch and himself from becoming casualties of the sea. The Mako, intrigued by the sudden change in the fish's movements, darted towards the now erratically moving target. Jorge watched with bated breath as the shark took the bait and went after the fish with renewed vigor. The ocean erupted into a spectacle of nature's raw dance, the predator and the prey in a fight for survival, with Jorge as the unwilling conductor of this aquatic symphony. In the chaos, the line snapped and Jorge's heart sank as he watched his catch disappear into the depths with the shark in hot pursuit. The loss of the fish stung, but the immediate threat to his safety had subsided, 
leaving Jorge to navigate the waves of relief and disappointment washing over him. The sea calmed as the Mako shark vanished into the blue, taking the moment's intensity. Jorge sat back, taking stock of the situation. El Guerrero had weathered the encounter, and apart from the loss of his catch and a frayed fishing line, all was intact. The sun still hung high, casting a serene light over the water as if the ocean wanted to make amends for its earlier treachery. As the resilient seafarer, Jorge continued his day on the water. The ocean was his home, and he knew that days like these were part of the pact he had made with the sea long ago. With a new line in place, he cast again into the vast expanse, his spirit unbroken, his respect for the ocean deepened by the day's events. As El Guerrero made its way back to shore later that day, the setting sun painted the sky in hues of orange and purple. Jorge reflected on the day's trial, a story of survival and the ever-present dance between man and the sea. He thought of the Mako shark as part of the ocean's tapestry as he was and felt a kinship with the predator that had tested his resolve. Back on land, Jorge's tale of the encounter spread among the local fishermen, a story of respect for the ocean's inhabitants and the unpredictable nature of the sea. It served as a reminder of the delicate balance between man and nature, which Jorge had navigated with skill and wisdom. As night fell on Baja California, Jorge looked out over the water, the stars reflecting off the calm sea. The day's events reaffirmed his connection to the ocean, a bond forged through years of challenges and triumphs. The trial he faced was a testament to his enduring spirit, a narrative of resilience that would be woven into the fabric of his seafaring legacy. In the dance of the fishermen and the sea, Jorge Alvarez had once again found harmony in the face of nature's unpredictable rhythm. A thrilling underwater adventure began in 2001 off the calm yet wild coast of Ningaloo Reef in Western Australia. Four deep-sea diving experts, led by Dr. Emily Hansen of the Marine Biology Department, embarked on an expedition to explore a newly mapped shipwreck. Luca Moretti was an experienced wreck diver, Sarah Chen was a photographer specializing in underwater habitats, and Tom Bennett was a young marine engineer. The azure waters in the Indian Ocean hid secrets beneath the surface as the boat was anchored early one morning. The sun's rays penetrated the water and created a play of light, enticing the divers to dive deeper. They prepared their cameras and scuba equipment before diving into the ocean. Their hearts were filled with excitement as they hoped to discover the secrets of the sunken vessel. The playful light above gradually dimmed as they descended, and the water deepened to a darker blue. With each meter they sank, the sunlight became a mere memory. Finally, the silhouette of the wreck emerged, looming as a ghostly presence in the dim light. This large ship sank decades ago and has transformed into a vibrant artificial reef with diverse sea life. Divers were stunned by the sight. Coral formations had painted the ship in vivid colors, Schooling fish darted out of broken portholes while sea anemones held onto the deck with their tentacles gently waving in the current. The ocean could reuse and recycle what used to be on the surface. Emily was amazed at the ship's condition as they explored its perimeter. Each section of the boat tells a different tale about its life above water. Luca was busy pointing out the markings of the hull while Sarah was busy capturing each detail with her cameras. Tom, always curious, stepped away from the group to inspect a dense cluster of barnacles. Tom's dislodged part of the wreckage and their exploration suddenly took a new turn. A cloud of sand and silt swirled around them, reducing their visibility to almost zero. The particles settled, and an ominous silhouette emerged from the murky water. The divers froze in place, stunned. Before them loomed a shark, its body scarred from battles long past, its gaze piercing. These marks endowed it with an aura of primal power. The great predator radiated displeasure at the human intrusion into its domain. The divers had to act quickly, temporarily forgetting their escape route to the surface. Emily instructed the divers to remain calm and to maintain a compact group. The shark circled them with its sleek, deliberate movements. Every turn the shark made in the dim light sent shivers up their spines. Emily remembered her knowledge about shark behavior. She knew great whites were curious but cautious creatures. She gently aimed her flashlight away from them toward the open ocean. It was intended to divert the shark by giving it something to look at away from them. 
Luca, meanwhile, found a possible hiding place. An overhanging part of the wreckage could provide them with a temporary shield. He pointed to the others and they carefully moved towards the wreck, never taking their eyes off the Great White. The shark seemed to grow more interested in the light as they nestled under the wreck. It slowly moved away from them into the sea's most profound darkness. As they watched the predator disappear, their hearts beat faster. The shark was still there, and they knew it. It was now up to them to find a way to get back to the boat without attracting the shark's attention. It would take all of their knowledge and wit to solve the problem. The ocean is not forgiving. They needed to act quickly. The team returned to the surface cautiously. The team navigated the labyrinth created by the corroded metal, overgrown sea life, and old ship. Each move was carefully calculated with a keen awareness of their surroundings. Sarah turned off her camera to avoid attracting unwanted attention. Tom ensured they had enough air to get them safely to the boat. Luca held his dive knife and watched for any sign of the shark's return. Emily was thinking about the behavior of the shark as she moved. The intelligence and curiosity of great white sharks are well known. The disturbance that they caused at first had likely drawn it. She hoped their more controlled and deliberate movements would make them seem less intrusive in this underwater realm. They reached a dense area of reef about halfway to their boat. This provided plenty of cover. Emily suggested that they ascend a few meters to reduce their risk of nitrogen narcosis. The group agreed to this, realizing the importance of both safety and strategy. As they climbed, their bodies adjusted slowly. The water became lighter as they rose, signaling that the sunlit waters were less dangerous. Even in the relative safety of the sunlit waters, they were still vigilant because they knew that a shark might be lurking nearby. They finally spotted the boat in the distance. It was a minor but comforting silhouette against the vast sea. They increased their speed slightly, eagerly rushing to safety. Tom saw a shadow in the peripheral of his vision. His heart skipped a few beats as he called out to the others. They watched as a prominent figure approached. The shark was there, its vast form quickly cutting through the water. Emily realized it was following their previous activities. She knew that they had to divert the shark one more time. She prepared to release the non-toxic dye cloud from a canister she brought for emergencies. A strong push through the water spread the dye, creating a dark, cloudy effect. The new stimuli enticed the shark and veered away from its original path. The divers seized the opportunity and made a final push to the boat. The divers reached the ship just as the dye faded and climbed aboard in relief. The adrenaline began to fade, and the reality of the experience slowly sank into their minds. The team survived by respecting the marine environment and using quick thinking. Emily kept a log of the events that day, recording every detail. This encounter taught Emily a valuable lesson about the fragile balance of marine ecosystems and nature's unpredictable behavior. The calm ocean magnified the profound depths they had ventured into. Amid this tranquility, the shark emerged as a stark reminder of the ocean's untamed nature. The divers looked on with admiration and fear, thankful for their safety, yet aware that each dive carried its uncertainty. They knew their subsequent descent into these mysterious waters could be just as unpredictable. In the serene expanse of Neptune Islands, South Australia, renowned for its crystal clear waters and a haven for marine enthusiasts, the adventure of Laura Bennett, an avid kayaker with years of experience, unfolds. With her spirit for solitude and nature, Laura embarked on a journey to explore the untouched beauty of this coastal paradise seeking the tranquility only the sea could offer. Laura set off from a secluded beach on a bright and sunny morning with the gentle hum of the sea breeze. Her kayak, a sleek vessel named Aurora, glided effortlessly over the calm waters, its bright yellow hue standing out against the ocean's deep blue. Laura paddled with rhythmic strokes, her heart filled with anticipation for the day's exploration. As she ventured further from the shore, the landscape transformed. The calm bays gave way to open waters, and the coastline's rugged beauty became more pronounced. Laura marveled at the sight of distant cliffs, their formations a testament to nature's artistry. She felt a deep connection to the sea, its vastness reminding her of the endless possibilities ahead. The Neptune Islands, known for their rich marine life, promised an encounter with nature in its rawest form. 
Laura hoped to catch a glimpse of the playful dolphins or the majestic seals that frequented these waters. Her kayak bobbed gently on the waves, a speck in the vast ocean, as she made her way to a spot known among locals for its underwater spectacle. As the sun climbed higher, the sea's colors shifted, shades of blue and green mingling in a mesmerizing dance. Laura found herself in a part of the ocean she hadn't explored before, a feeding ground teeming with life. Schools of fish darted beneath her kayak, their silver bodies shimmering in the sunlight. Engrossed in the beauty beneath the surface, Laura failed to notice the shift in the atmosphere. The water around her seemed to stir, a subtle change that hinted at the presence of something much larger. Then she saw a shadow looming beneath the surface, its size and shape unmistakable. A great white shark, curious and majestic, glided silently through the water. Its appearance was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. Laura's heart raced as she realized the gravity of her situation. She was in the shark's domain, an uninvited guest in the feeding ground of one of nature's most formidable predators. The shark circled, its movements graceful yet deliberate. Laura knew she needed to remain calm. Her experience on the water had taught her that panic could lead to disaster. She kept her movements steady, avoiding sudden splashes that might attract unwanted attention. As the shark made another pass, closer this time, Laura's mind raced. She needed a plan, a way to navigate this encounter and return to the safety of the shore. While not showing immediate aggression, the shark was a wild card in the vast ocean. The standoff continued, each moment stretching into eternity. Laura's resolve was tested as she balanced the urge to flee with the need to maintain a delicate peace with the Great White. As the sun's rays filtering through the water cast an ethereal glow on the tense scene, Laura Bennett knew the time for passive observation had passed. Her heart pounded, not just from fear but from a surge of adrenaline that demanded action. The great white shark, a magnificent yet daunting presence, continued its curious circling, bringing the reality of the wild ocean into sharp focus. Laura's mind raced through her options, Fleeing directly to shore could provoke the shark into seeing her as prey, triggering a chase she was unlikely to win. Yet staying still for too long wasn't a viable option either. She needed a strategy that leveraged her skills and the kayak's capabilities without inciting the shark. Drawing from her deep well of kayaking experience, Laura decided to create a gentle, rhythmic disturbance in the water with her paddle, mimicking the sound of fish movements rather than the frantic splashing of prey. She hoped this would pique the shark's curiosity without triggering its predatory instincts. Laura noticed the shark's circling pattern change as she executed her plan. It responded more to the rhythm than to her presence. Seizing this opportunity, Laura began to paddle slowly but with purpose, keeping her strokes smooth and even, guiding the kayak parallel to the shoreline. The minutes stretched on, each paddle stroke a calculated risk. Laura kept her eyes on the horizon focusing on the outline of the distant cliffs as a beacon of hope. The shark, still in proximity, seemed less interested in her and more in the disturbance she created with her paddle. Gradually, the distance between Laura and the shoreline decreased. The shark, perhaps satisfied with its investigation or distracted by other stimuli, slowly veered away, disappearing into the ocean's depths. Laura's relief was palpable, but she didn't allow herself to relax. She continued her steady pace, mindful of the ocean's unpredictable nature, until the beach finally appeared. As Laura's kayak touched the sandy shore, she allowed herself a moment to absorb the gravity of her experience. The encounter with the great white shark was a stark reminder of the respect the ocean demands and the fine line between adventure and peril. She felt a newfound appreciation for the delicate balance of marine life and the importance of understanding the environments we choose to explore. Laura's encounter with the great white shark became a defining moment. With their stunning landscapes and thrilling wildlife encounters, the Neptune Islands remained a cherished destination, but Laura's approach to exploring them had evolved. She now kayaked with an even more profound sense of responsibility, not just for her safety but for preserving the natural beauty that had drawn her to these waters in the first place. In the end, Laura's story wasn't just about a close encounter with one of the ocean's most formidable predators. It was a testament to the human spirit's resilience and the profound connections we can have with the natural world when we approach it with respect and humility. Linda was a 45-year-old woman Australian town resident. 
who had always enjoyed life's little pleasures and adventures. She discovered she had more free time after marrying and raising her kids. Luckily, she was surrounded by a small but close-knit community that shared her enthusiasm and inventiveness. Linda has a unique group of pals. They all had extraordinarily inventive imaginations and a preference for looking for fun and excitement in all facets of life. They knew how to make the most of their time together, whether by traveling to new locations, engaging in hobbies, or just spending time together. Linda's life tragically changed when her spouse died in a vehicle accident, leaving her a widow. She struggled to deal with the loss and frequently turned to her friends for comfort because they offered her much-needed companionship and support. One day, she had a brilliant idea while thinking about bringing some excitement back into her life. She decided to organize a sea tour of Australia. She was drawn to the huge ocean's attraction and the prospect of fresh experiences. She was confident that her pals, with their boundless energy, would make the ideal traveling companions. Linda excitedly texted her friends about her plans for the sea cruise. She wanted them to come on this great journey with her. Following numerous deliberations and scheduling, Linda's best friend Maria consented to travel with her. The two pals planned their sea excursion and settled on the 13th of the month as their date. They were all looking forward to seeing the tranquility and beauty of the Australian sea as they drove their cars to their destination. As she looked to the sea, Linda thought, what if they could use a board or other watercraft to explore the waters? She enthusiastically proposed this idea to Maria, who enthusiastically accepted the notion. They decided to rent a board to make the most of their sea excursion. After renting some boards, Linda and Maria set out on their underwater adventure. They were excited to record their adventures and capture the splendor of the water, so they brought their cameras. Maria, in particular, was passionate about making movies and sharing them with her friends and fans, but they were unprepared for a tiger shark's sudden and unwanted arrival, regarded as one of the ocean's most dangerous predators. The worst-case scenario occurred while they enjoyed the calm surroundings and paddled deeper into the sea. When the tiger shark finally surfaced, Linda and Maria felt a surge of terror accompany them. Fearing for their lives, they attempted valiantly to restore their equilibrium on the board. But panic struck. The tiger shark attacked during the ensuing turmoil, snaking Linda's arms with strong teeth. While her friend Maria heroically attempted to help her, she let out an agonized scream. Maria was, however, also caught in the board during the frantic struggle, making it nearly impossible for her to escape the predator's hold. The savage shark tore at Linda's arms, causing blood to fill the water. As they struggled to deal with the catastrophic situation, time appeared to slow down and the anguish became unbearable. Maria was stuck and could not help, so the odds seemed overwhelming. The tiger shark plunged deeply into the water, losing sight of itself in a desperate attempt to survive. This provided a little relief for Linda and Maria. Linda felt her power ebbing as she started to lose consciousness while she held her wounded arms. Realizing the situation's urgency, Maria mustered her last strength and broke free from the board. She swam rapidly back to Linda, who was now teetering on unconsciousness. Maria struggled to lift Linda onto the board and paddled back to the shore as quickly as possible. Panic and anxiety drove her determination because she knew every second counted. When they got to the coast, Maria hurried Linda to the closest parking area near the shore. Linda was critically injured, her arms torn and gushing blood. Pain and fear shot through her, making it difficult for her to remain aware. Maria quickly assisted Linda into her car and drove quickly to the closest hospital. Her veins were filled with panic and adrenaline as she fervently begged for Linda's survival. Maria didn't take long to arrive at the hospital. After she hurried Linda into the emergency department, Medical professionals and nurses evaluated her injuries to see how serious they were. They performed scans and tests, which showed how much damage there was. It was obvious that Linda required emergency surgery to preserve her arms and potentially her life. After countless hours of labor by the physicians to stabilize her, Linda was hospitalized for two months. To restore her ability to use her arms, Linda underwent numerous hospital procedures and a strenuous rehabilitation regimen. She was in excruciating bodily and mental agony. Still, she found strength in the encouragement of her friends and family, especially Maria, who had supported her during that ill-fated sea voyage. 
Linda remembered the day that had permanently altered her life as she began to heal gradually. The sea, which formerly stood for beauty and adventure, is now associated with trauma and danger. She was aware that the wounds from that day would follow her for the rest of her life, both emotionally and physically. The event also acted as a sharp reminder of how unpredictable life can be, and how crucial it is to cherish each moment. Linda promised herself that while pursuing pleasure and adventure, she would do so with a renewed appreciation for the natural world and a reminder always to put safety first. Ultimately, Linda's fortitude and her friend's unfailing support enabled her to heal physically and emotionally. Although the terrifying encounter she had with the tiger shark will always haunt her, it also demonstrates the strength of friendship and the tenacity of the human heart. In the tranquil, sun-drenched embrace of Hanalei Bay, Kauai, back in 2005, the breathtaking beauty of nature hid the hidden perils beneath its surface. This bay, famed for its crystal-clear waters and monumental waves, had become a hallowed ground for surfers across the globe. Among the thunderous waves, it was here that the destinies of two young men, Jackson Pierce and Liam Gray, became entangled with fate in a manner that would irrevocably change their lives. Jackson, a dynamic soul with an oceanic passion as profound as the sea itself, had journeyed to Hawaii from the lively streets of San Francisco, seeking waves that murmured of ancient heroes. Liam, his closest companion, shared this deep connection with the sea, a link forged from childhood dreams and endless summers spent pursuing the horizon on their surfboards. Together, they were inseparable, two spirits navigating the surges of life. On the destined day, the sky boasted a pristine blue, with the sun showering golden rays over the sea, creating an idyllic backdrop for the yearly Hanalei Surf Contest. Surfers from every corner of the earth had convened, their hearts buoyant with the excitement of the forthcoming challenge. Jackson and Liam, among the participants, radiated with the joy of the contest that lay before them. The competition began with the symphonic crash of waves against the sand displaying nature's formidable power. Jackson and Liam, with their adept surfing skills, moved through the water with elegance, their boards cutting through the waves with precision. They progressed through the rounds, drawing closer to the ultimate face-off, their resolve unwavering. Yet, in its vast and unpredictable essence, the ocean housed a silent observer. A great white shark, attracted by the disturbance, stealthily prowled the depths, its primal instincts aroused. As Jackson and Liam ventured out for their concluding round, a Sudin, fierce disturbancy abruptly disrupted the moment's serenity. A towering wave surpassing any they had encountered ascended from the ocean's heart, its peak shimmering in the sunlight. Riding atop this considerable wave, Jackson experienced an adrenaline rush, oblivious to the shadow swiftly approaching from below. In an instant, turmoil erupted. The shark, a titan of the deep, initiated its assault, its mouth agape. The audience's cheers morphed into shrieks of terror as the waters around Jackson were stained with blood. In a valiant effort to rescue his friend, Liam paddled toward Jackson with all his might, his heart racing with dread. He reached Jackson just as the shark prepared for another attack, its eyes fixed with a predatory glare. With desperation-fueled bravery, Liam endeavored to keep Jackson afloat his actions a glimmer of hope amidst the looming disaster. However, destiny cruelly shifted, and the shark redirected its focus towards Liam. In a moment, Liam vanished beneath the waves, seized by the colossal beast, leaving Jackson in shock and disbelief. Rescued by the swift action of the lifeguards, Jackson was brought ashore, his body marked by the encounter, but his spirit shattered by the loss of his best friend. The tragic event's news spread rapidly, enveloping the surfing community in a veil of sorrow. As Jackson healed from his physical wounds, his mind was besieged by the haunting memories of that day. Survivors' guilt burdened his soul, a constant reminder of their dream's cost. Once a source of jubilation and liberation, the ocean had become a painful reminder of Liam's absence. In the following months, Jackson receded from the world, his surfboard left untouched, accumulating dust in a corner of his room. The waves, which once beckoned him to adventure, now carried tales of grief and despair. Yet, within his anguish, a flicker of determination ignited. 
Motivated by a new purpose, Jackson embarked on a path of healing and atonement. He became a champion for shark conservation, transforming his anguish into a mission that paid tribute to Liam's memory. Jackson dedicated himself to educating communities about the critical role of preserving marine ecosystems and promoting safety in aquatic sports. His initiatives gradually garnered attention, transforming him into a symbol of hope and change. Through seminars, documentaries, and collaborations with conservation organizations, Jackson raised awareness about sharks and misunderstood nature and their crucial function in maintaining the ocean's equilibrium. Years later, Jackson's efforts led to the adoption safety protocols in surfing competitions and leisure water activities. His narrative, a powerful testament to human resilience, inspired many to perceive the ocean and its inhabitants through a lens of respect and understanding. The annual Hanalei Surf Contest, now in honor of Liam, incorporated educational components on marine conservation, evolving into a platform for advocacy and transformation. Though permanently marked by the tragedy, Jackson found comfort in the waves that had once taken everything from him. In its boundless wisdom, the ocean revealed that even in its darkest depths, there lies a beacon of light. Through his actions, Jackson commemorated Liam's memory and ensured that his spirit continued to guide others toward a harmonious existence with the majestic inhabitants of the deep. As the sun lay below the horizon of Hanalei Bay, bathing the waters in a golden radiance, Jackson stood on the shoreline, his eyes fixed on the vast expanse before him. The sea, once a source of anguish, had transformed into his refuge, a place where the echoes of the past blended with the whispers of hope for the future. In the rhythmic dance of the waves, he discovered tranquility, a reminder that there lies the potential for rebirth and growth even amid loss. The survivor's guilt evolved beyond a story of tragedy. It became a narrative of courage, affection, and the unbreakable connection between humanity and nature. In the heart of the ocean, where tales of lost souls and brave hearts merge, the saga of Jackson and Liam would forever ripple through the ages, a testament to the strength that emerges in facing overwhelming adversities. Jackson's journey illustrated that every thread of sorrow is interwoven with strands of hope and resilience in the vast tapestry of life. His advocacy served as a memorial to Liam and acted as a beacon, illuminating the path for others to follow and fostering a respectful coexistence with the sea's enigmatic creatures. The annual homage to Liam at the Hanalei Surf Competition became a poignant reminder of the fragile balance between human aspirations and the natural world. It served as a call to action, urging participants and spectators alike to embrace the ocean's wonders with mindful reverence. A legacy of awareness and conservation was birthed in the serene embrace of Hanalei Bay, where the saga of two souls bound by their love for the ocean unfolded. Jackson's transformation from a grief-stricken survivor to a luminary of environmental stewardship symbolized the indomitable spirit of humanity's capacity to find meaning and purpose through the trials of life. Beneath a canopy of stars that twinkled in concert with the glistening sea below, the silhouette of Jackson against the backdrop of the setting sun became a poignant symbol of the perpetual cycle of loss and redemption. The gentle lapping of the ocean's tireless waves against the shore carried stories of resilience and the promise of new beginnings, a soothing melody that spoke to the soul. In this moment of reflection, the memory of Liam and the profound lessons his departure imparted were not lost to the sands of time, but rather immortalized in the rhythm of the sea. These lessons, woven into the fabric of the ocean's song, served as a beacon of inspiration, encouraging all who stood at the water's edge to embrace their dreams with courage. As the night deepened, the celestial dance above mirrored the undulating waves, each star's twinkle a testament to the enduring spirit of hope. Jackson, a solitary figure against the vastness of the sea and sky, became the embodiment of the human capacity to find strength in adversity and to seek redemption in loss. It was a reminder that even in our darkest moments, the natural world around us, with its infinite beauty and timeless cycles, offers solace and the promise that from loss can emerge the most profound insights, guiding us to dance once more with the waves, ever hopeful, ever forward. In 2003, a lavish beach party unfolded on the white sands of a private island in the Maldives. 
This remote paradise, encircled by the crystal clear waters of the Indian Ocean, offered an idyllic escape. A group of guests had chosen this secluded haven to enjoy the sun and sand, seeking a tranquil retreat far from the bustle of everyday life. Their presence on the island underscored its allure as a perfect hideaway. The party began in the late afternoon as the island glowed under the bright sun reflecting off the turquoise water. The guests lounged on a white sandy beach while sipping exotic beverages and enjoying the luxurious atmosphere. The setting was beautiful, with palms swaying in the wind and gourmet food spread out under a canopy decorated by vibrant tropical flowers. As the sun dipped toward the horizon, several guests chose to cool off in the inviting ocean. Their laughter and splashes filled the air, masking the ominous shadow that moved stealthily beneath the surface. The initial hint of danger was subtle, a brief splash, a startled cry. Only moments before, the water had been serene and transparent. Panic quickly erupted and the guests scrambled frantically out of the water, their faces etched with terror. A monster shark, far more prominent than the typical predators of these waters, had made itself known. The dark silhouette of the shark was visible below the surface as it circled the area where the guests were swimming. The massive shark glided frighteningly through the water, its movements deliberate. The guests began to realize they were stuck on an island, cut off by the mainland. Fear had shattered the festive mood of the guests, and they gathered on a beach. The guests watched helplessly as the shark patrolled the waters with its dorsal fin, slicing its surface like a warning sign. It would sometimes disappear into the depths, but reappear nearer the shore as if to taunt its stranded victims. The island became eerie as the night fell. Lanterns from the party uncertainly danced on the sand. Usually calm, the ocean now appeared as a vast, insurmountable barrier. The guests tried to form a plan as they huddled. The guests had to survive until rescue, but their options were limited because the shark controlled the water. As they surveyed their supplies, food and medical supplies, and any tools that might be used as weapons or deterrents, tension was palpable. Some guests started constructing crude spears out of broken branches and debris. In contrast, others searched the island for any items that might help signal for assistance. The shark was a constant danger, and its appearance on the shore reminded the guests of their vulnerability. The reality of the situation became more apparent as the first night went on. The likelihood of another attack increased with each passing hour. They knew they would need a better plan to survive until help arrived. The group needed to learn the shark's habits and how to keep it away. They needed to keep out of the water and have the cunning and the unity necessary to survive. They watched the water, knowing the next day would bring new challenges. Their fight for survival had just begun. The situation became more apparent as dawn broke on the island. The shark kept up its relentless patrol. Its presence was a constant danger to the stranded tourists. The guests were stranded with no hope of rescue, and their supplies ran out. They needed a viable plan. Guests observed the behavior of the shark throughout the morning. They noted its patterns and when it came closer to the shore. It was attracted by splashes and movement in the water. With this information, they devised an elaborate plan to create a distraction that would allow them to signal for help while avoiding the shark's attention. They built a raft from leftover party decorations, guided by the technical know-how of an engineer among the guests. Their strategy was to affix an emergency flare to the raft as a distress signal. They planned to launch it from the island's far side, an area frequently visited by sharks, hoping the ocean currents would carry it far enough to be visible to passing planes or ships. This way, they could signal for help without agitating the waters near their own location. The raft was completed by midday. A small group of people waded into the water with calm excitement and careful movements to launch the raft. They watched as the raft floated away. The flare was ready to ignite when the raft reached a safe distance. The next few minutes were a test of patience and nerves. The guests kept a close eye on the shark and raft. They were ready to take action at the first sign that either failed. The flare was lit when the raft had reached what the guests hoped would be a safe distance. The bright red flare was a striking contrast to the blue sky of midday. All eyes were on the flare in hopes that it would attract the attention of rescuers. The shark, possibly curious at the sudden flash of light, moved towards deeper water and temporarily avoided the island. 
The guests took advantage of this opportunity to prepare their temporary shelter if help was still hours or days away. The flare was out of light as the evening turned into night. There was no immediate sign that help would be coming. The plan was not in vain. The flare was spotted by a passing cargo ship which contacted the local authorities. The guests were unaware that rescue was on the way. The night was filled with anxiety and long waiting. The two men took turns watching the shark as it circled the island. Its predatory nature was not deterred. As the sun rose the following day, a helicopter sounded to break the silence. As they waved furiously, the rescue team was attracted to them. The team worked quickly to evacuate all of the people from the island. Everyone saw the shark still patrolling in the water below as they boarded their helicopter. The ordeal was over, but those days of terror would live on in the minds of all who witnessed it. The guests told their story of survival when they returned to the mainland. They were bonded in unexpected ways by the experience, which reminded them of the strength of the human spirit. The experience left them with a greater respect for the ocean depths and the creatures that live there, as a reminder of the power of nature, even in paradise. In the early hours of a misty morning at New Smyrna Beach, Florida, 16-year-old Tyler Johnson prepared for a day of surfing. Known for its lively surf culture, this stretch of coastline was a magnet for wave enthusiasts like Tyler. Despite his young age, Tyler had developed a deep connection with the sea, finding solace and exhilaration in the rhythm of the waves. On this particular morning, Tyler was especially eager. A recent storm had passed, promising exceptional waves, a surfer's dream. Clutching his cherished surfboard, a sleek design painted with vibrant streaks of blue and green, Tyler made his way to the water's edge, his footsteps leaving a trail in the soft sand. As he paddled out, the first light of dawn painted the sky in hues of orange and pink, reflecting off the water's surface and creating a scene of tranquil beauty. Tyler's heart raced with anticipation as he positioned himself, waiting for the perfect wave to ride. The ocean, however, held secrets beneath its serene surface. Unknown to Tyler and the few early surfers dotting the water, a bull shark, drawn by the remnants of fishing activity from the previous night, was navigating the shallows. Bull sharks, known for their adaptability to salt and fresh water, occasionally ventured close to shore, their presence unbeknownst to the surfers above. As Tyler caught his first wave, the thrill of the ride consumed him. He moved with the wave, a seamless part of the ocean's ebb and flow. The early morning crowd cheered from the shore, a distant sound amid the roar of the water. Meanwhile, the bull shark, lurking in the murky waters, mistook the silhouette of Tyler's surfboard for the fish it often preyed upon. Its instincts honed over millions of years, the shark moved closer, its curiosity piqued by the unusual shape and movement above. Oblivious to the danger lurking beneath, Tyler paddled back out after his successful ride, his mind focused on the next wave. The tranquility of the morning, combined with the exhilaration of surfing, created a sense of peace and invincibility. As he waited for another wave, the shark, intrigued by Tyler's board's consistent movement, decided to investigate. The water around Tyler suddenly felt different, an unexplained tension filling the air. A shadow passed beneath him, too quick to discern its origin, the beach's natural beauty, with its golden sands and the sun now fully risen, offered no hint of the drama unfolding offshore. Sensing the water's rhythm shift, Tyler scanned the surface but saw nothing. The moment of calm was shattered when the shark, driven by instinct, swiftly moved towards Tyler's board. The sudden turbulence jolted him, a stark reminder of the ocean's unpredictable nature. Tyler's heart pounded his mind racing to comprehend the situation as he caught a glimpse of the shark's dorsal fin slicing through the water. The struggle for survival began in earnest. Tyler knew he had to keep his composure to navigate this life-threatening predicament. The shark, mistaking his board for prey, was relentless, its powerful movements causing water to churn violently around him. As the powerful movements of the shark caused the water around him to churn violently, Tyler's instincts kicked in. He remembered the countless stories and advice from seasoned surfers about staying calm during a shark encounter. The vast, open waters of New Smyrna Beach, usually a surfer's sanctuary, had suddenly become the stage for a life-or-death dance between man and nature. Tyler fought to keep his balance on the surfboard, 
knowing that falling into the water could increase the risk of the shark mistaking him for prey. His mind raced for a solution, and he recalled a technique he had learned to make himself appear larger and more intimidating to the shark. With deliberate movements, Tyler stretched out his arms and started to slap the water surface, creating a commotion that he hoped would deter the shark. The bull shark, curious and perhaps confused by Tyler's actions, circled, its sleek, powerful form visible beneath the water's surface. Now aware of the situation, the early morning surfers began to paddle towards the shore their movements cautious to avoid attracting the shark's attention. From the beach, alarmed onlookers gathered, their concern evident as they watched the unfolding drama. Tyler's heart pounded in his chest as he made himself seem as large as possible, keeping his eyes on the shark. The moments felt like hours, each second a test of his courage and resolve. After an eternity, the shark began to lose interest, its attention drawn away by a school of fish darting through the waves. Seizing the moment, Tyler slowly paddled towards the shore, his movements measured and steady to avoid provoking the shark. The safety distance seemed immense, but with each stroke, he moved closer to the sandy beach and away from the lurking danger. As Tyler reached the shallows, a wave of relief washed over him. His legs trembled as he stood up, dragging his surfboard onto the beach. The crowd erupted into cheers and applause, relieved and amazed by his safe return. Tyler's ordeal became a testament to the unpredictable nature of the ocean and the creatures that inhabit it. The encounter with the bull shark, a reminder of the respect and caution the sea demands, left an indelible mark on his psyche. Though shaken, Tyler's passion for surfing remained unbroken, but his respect for the ocean's power and inhabitants deepened. Tyler's story spread through the community in the following days, serving as a cautionary tale and a lesson in survival. He became an advocate for shark awareness, sharing his experience to educate others about the importance of understanding marine life and the need for coexistence with the ocean's creatures. Tyler's brush with the bull shark at New Smyrna Beach didn't deter him from returning to the waves. However, he now surfed with heightened awareness and renewed humility towards the vast, mysterious ocean. His encounter, a stark reminder of the delicate balance between humans and nature, echoed in his mind with each paddle each wave and each sunrise that greeted him at the shore. Clara Bennett, a marine biologist, studied the behavior of great white sharks off the coast of California's Farallon Islands. The Farallon Islands, known for abundant marine life, have always been a hot spot where sharks congregate. However, there has been an alarming increase in aggressive behavior and encounters in recent months. While aboard a small research vessel, Dr. Bennett carefully recorded the increase in sharks and their aggressive interactions. The data was puzzling. Something was changing their behavior and pushing them to become more aggressive towards humans. On the islands, locals began to notice an alarming trend. Fishermen reported nets ripped apart and stories of sharks scaring them. Several locals went on late-night fishing trips and disappeared, leaving only questions. Fear grew among islanders. Dr. Bennett, driven by the need to understand these anomalies better and find solutions, teamed up with Jack Harper, an experienced fisherman with a vast knowledge of local waters. Together, they decided to track sharks' movements to discover any environmental changes that might influence their behavior. They found a previously unknown area of the ocean floor. They discovered an underwater crevasse using sonar mapping equipment. This may have been due to seismic activity in the area. The crevasse releases minerals and nutrients from deep seas into the water. This created an artificial upwelling that attracted several marine animals, including sharks. Sharks were exhibiting aggressive and territorial behavior due to the nutrient-rich water. Dr. Bennett, Jack, and the islanders realized this situation's danger to the local wildlife and the community. They devised a plan to seal off the crevasse to stop the flow of nutrients. They embarked on a risky operation with the help of local authorities and a group of environmental engineers. The goal was to place large concrete blocks and boulders at the opening of the crevasse. It was daunting, requiring precise timing and placement in waters filled with sharks. The team began operating from a modified barge equipped with heavy lifting gear and cranes. The initial attempts at positioning the boulders succeeded despite the sharks circling nearby. A mechanical failure in the barge crane delayed the placement of the final block. The delay was crucial, 
The team was in a dangerous situation as the sun set and cast a crimson tint over the water. Sharks began to close in, perhaps attracted by the activity or sensing disturbance to their feeding grounds. The barge was immobilized, and as night approached, Dr. Bennett, Jack, and their crew faced the terrifying reality of being trapped under the water and surrounded by sharks that were becoming increasingly aggressive. They hoped to fix the crane and seal the crevasse quickly before the situation worsened. As the shadows of the sharks became bolder, the sea whispered to them to keep going. The barge was rushing out of the darkness that enveloped the Farallon Islands. Clara Bennett, Jack Harper, and their crew scrambled to fix the mechanical failure. Great white sharks were active in the surrounding waters, and their silhouettes became more threatening with every passing minute. They worked furiously, knowing that each minute they lost would increase their risk. After what seemed like hours, the crane finally sputtered to life. They had no time to waste and resumed their operation to seal the crevasse. The final piece of concrete, designed to fit precisely over the opening in the crevasse, was carefully dropped towards the seabed. The team watched through underwater cameras as the boulder settled. The plume of nutrients slowly dissipated, and marine life activity slowed down. The intervention appeared to be working, but the situation must be monitored to confirm. As Dr. Bennett realized their plan had a chance of success, relief washed through them. Their celebration, however, was short-lived. Although less agitated than before, the sharks were still nearby and their patterns had been disrupted. The team had to retreat safely to evaluate the long-term impact of their actions. The ocean is unpredictable. As the crew prepared to depart, the vessel was gently rocked. Every crew member was on edge as they returned to the island. As they approached the harbor and its safety, the weight of their ordeal started to sink in. The fact that they had survived a deadly sea predator was a great accomplishment. In the following days, Dr. Bennett's team and their observatory on the island observed a gradual return of normal shark behavior. Sharks began to behave less aggressively, and the marine ecosystem started to recover. Fishermen reported fewer shark encounters, and the local community overcame their fear of water. The sealing of the crevasse is just the beginning. Dr. Bennett's findings highlighted the fragile balance of marine ecosystems and the unexpected effects of natural events such as seismic activity. Her work highlighted the importance of monitoring underwater geological changes in ocean conservation efforts. Jack Harper, a man who has lived all his life near the sea, developed a new appreciation for the efforts of the scientific community to protect and understand marine life. He used his experience to promote local conservation efforts. He educated others on the importance of preserving and respecting the natural world. The incident on the Farallon Islands was used as a case study in marine biology courses around the globe. The incident served as a stark reminder of the interconnectedness of life above and beneath the surface. The ability of the community to adapt to and respond to environmental issues was a testimony to human resilience. For Dr. Bennett, this experience strengthened her commitment to marine science. She continued to be fascinated by the Farallon Islands and their complex ecology and wild beauty. As the incident became known, Crimson Tide was an essential moment in her life that reaffirmed the importance of science to understanding and preserving our world. In the peaceful seaside area of Tidewater, located along South Africa's picturesque garden route, known for its breathtaking landscapes and marine marvels, the year was 2010. This beautiful enclave, renowned for its scenic attraction and the hidden dangers beneath its giant waves, became the scenery for a profoundly moving incident of loss, perseverance, and the complex relationship between humans and the natural world. Elena Ramirez, aged 34, an architect whose soul was as vast and deep as the ocean, had recently settled in Tidewater, drawn by a quest for peace and a muse for her designs. Despite being an outsider, Elena quickly became a beloved figure in the community. Her laughter was a familiar melody at the local markets, and her kindness was a balm to many. The secluded Turtle Bay became her refuge, where she, accompanied by Max, her loyal and vibrant dog, would wander the shores at dawn, finding solace and inspiration. Elena and Max embarked on their customary sunrise expedition along the beach on a morning destined to be etched in their memory. With its expansive sands and towering cliffs, this stretch of coastline had always been their haven, where the land met the sea in stunning harmony. 
The day broke with the sky painted in soft hues of pastels, promising the gentle warmth of the sun. A picture of perfection until the sea revealed its unpredictable and formidable nature. Max, ever spirited, pursued a frisbee with uninhibited joy, his barks of delight harmonizing with the serene morning. But this peace was abruptly disrupted. A great white shark, perhaps lured by the shifting currents or in pursuit of its next meal, made its way closer to the shore. These apex predators, known for their formidable size and unparalleled strength, embody the ocean's untamed force. This particular shark moving closer with a stealth that belied its size, set its sights on the unsuspecting pair. The ensuing attack was both sudden and ferocious. Just as Max reached his beloved toy, the shark surfaced, its mighty jaws closing on him. Time seemed to stand still for Elena as she watched the harrowing scene unfold. The water churned violently, the shark dragging Max into the depths. Driven by a surge of adrenaline, Elena moved instinctively towards the turmoil, her desperate cries swallowed by the roar of the waves. Frozen at the water's edge, realization struck Elena. The ocean's depths, now a domain of fear, held a threat beyond her challenge. Onlookers drawn by her cries held her back, saving her from a rash and likely deadly act. As she stood, the harsh truth settled in. Max was gone, and with him, a piece of her heart. In the wake of this tragedy, Elena grappled with a storm of emotions. Sorrow for Max, rage against fate, and guilt for her powerlessness. The question of what if haunted her, even as she knew the shark's might was unchallengeable. The community's efforts to comfort her felt hollow, unable to fill the void Max left. From her grief emerged a purpose. Elena channeled her pain into Max's vigil, a movement to educate on the dangers within their idyllic waters, driven by a determination to spare others her agony. Her initiative quickly gathered support, spreading awareness through signs and workshops, teaching the ocean's beauty and hazards. Elena's path was fraught with obstacles. Some locals resisted seeing her campaign as an attack on their lifestyle and the town's tourism. Her proposals sparked debate, dividing the community and placing Elena at the storm's heart. Yet her message found resonance, drawing support from beyond Tidewater. Environmentalists and experts joined her, advocating for a balanced respect for the ocean. A crucial town hall meeting saw Elena advocating for coexistence with nature. Her plea, heartfelt and compelling, emphasized respect over fear. The resolution came not in restrictions, but in an educational program embodying Max's legacy, a testament to love's power to enact change. Elena remained a figure by the shore, her eyes often drawn to where sea and sky merge. Though the pain of Max's loss lingered, solace came from knowing his memory lived on, guiding others toward safety. The incident, rooted in Tidewater's serene shores, was more than a tale of loss. It was a narrative of hope, resilience, and the profound capacity for transformation after tragedy, highlighting the enduring bond between humanity and the vast, mysterious sea.